Hello and welcome to the Past Functional Skills video solutions for the City and Guilds Functional Skills English Level 2 Reading Sample Paper 4. Before watching this video, make sure that you've read the two documents in the insert and you have attempted to complete the paper yourself. Question 1. What feature in the development plans will benefit bicycle users? So in this question, we need to look at document 1 and we need to find in the development plans a feature that will benefit bicycle users. So this means that we're going to scan through the document and look for any mentions of cycling or anything that might benefit bicycle users. So when we have a read through, we can see that cycling is mentioned here and it's said that they will add cycle lanes throughout the Hurstbourne shopping area. So new cycle lanes will benefit bicycle users. Question two, how will the council turn Hurstbourne Castle into a world-class destination? Give two answers. So in this question, we're going to scan the text for mentions of Hurstbourne Castle. And then we're going to look at how, so the different methods that the council will use to turn the castle into a world-class destination. We've got to give two answers here, so two ways in which the council will make it this world-class destination, somewhere really interesting to visit. So if we scan through the text, we'll see that they say they will transform Hurstbourne Castle into a world-class destination by making it capable of hosting 400,000 visitors annually. The castle is the pride of our community and has an incredible amount of history to share. With our £5 million investment, the castle will finally receive the attention it deserves. So what things have the council decided that they're going to do to transform Hurstbourne Castle into a world-class destination? Well, they've said that they will invest £5 million and they will make it capable of hosting 400,000 visitors annually. So 400,000 visitors and an investment of 5 million will make the castle into a world-class destination. Question three, which one of the following words best describes the tone of document one? So in this question, we need to read document one and establish what the tone of the document is. So when we're looking at tone, we're considering sort of the overall feel of the document. How does the document come across overall? So let's look at the options that we have here. So the first one is pushy. So that would suggest trying to persuade someone quite strongly. And the document definitely doesn't do that. We've got sort of descriptions um, of what the council plan to do, but they're not trying to push anyone um, to take some one kind of opinion or push them into any kind of action. So it's not a pushy document. Apologetic, well that means saying sorry for something and the document doesn't really apologise at all. Is it dismissive? Well dismissive suggests that you don't really care about other people's ideas or you dismiss um, their suggestions. And we don't really have that here. Again, it's just a description of what work they plan to do. And finally, formal. This is definitely a formal document. Now, how do we know this? Well, it has been written by Hurstbourne City Council. So it's a formal document because it comes from this official source there. It's part of a government website. It's used formal language throughout, so we don't have any contractions like can't or won't in the document. And it's written in standard English with no slang. And that makes the tone formal overall. So the correct answer is D, formal. Question four. Look at the first paragraph. What are two words or phrases the author of document one has used to exaggerate the problems with Hurstbourne City Centre? So in this question, we're focusing on document one and we only want to look at the first paragraph, not the rest of the text. And we want to identify two words or phrases that the author is using to exaggerate the problems with Hurstbourne City Centre. 
So here we're looking for words or phrases that say that Hearst Bond City Centre, the area is very, very negative. They're going to exaggerate the problems, make them seem a lot worse than they actually are. So if we have a look at the first paragraph, we can see that Hearst Bond City Centre is in need of investment. The shopping centre and bus station were built in the 1970s, are in desperate need of modernisation. So that adjective there, desperate, that is an example of exaggeration. They're saying, they're using quite a strong adjective there to say that the city centre needs modernising. They go on to say that the area is intimidating, so scary and unattractive for people arriving by bus. So that's another word used to exaggerate the problems there. And there is little nightlife in the evenings for a major city centre. The current layout of the road system can make it difficult for shoppers and pedestrians to move freely, choking the area. So here we've got another phrase to exaggerate the problems, choking the area. That's quite a vivid image that has been created there through the use of a metaphor. We want to attract more shoppers and visitors to Hurstbourne, so we're proposing regenerating the area and changing the issues that are stifling the city centre's ability to grow. So here we've got stifling. That's another word that is exaggerating the problems and suggesting that they are particularly negative. So here the student has identified two words or phrases. They've got intimidating and stifling, and they've used the correct part of the text, the first paragraph, so they would get both marks for this question. Question five, apart from exaggeration, identify two language techniques used in document one to get its message across. For each identified technique, give one example from the text. So in this question, we need to not focus on exaggeration, so don't mention that at all. And we need to find two language techniques that have been used in document one. And then we need to give examples of these. So an example of each of the two language techniques that we've identified. So what are language techniques? Well, they are the ways that the writer has used specific language to create specific effects on the reader. So they can be things like similes, metaphors, emotive language, facts, alliteration, repetition. There's a lot that you can choose from here. So make sure that you are choosing techniques that you're familiar with so that you can give a relevant example. So the student here has identified facts and figures as a language technique. And the example that they've given is 250 million. So that is a relevant example. It is definitely a figure that has been identified from the text. And that is a relevant language technique to identify there. And then they've identified repetition. So repetition is when certain words or phrases are repeated within a text. And that is definitely present in document one. There is a repetition of the phrase, we will, throughout the text. Question six, in which month will work take place on Clumber Street? So here we are just needing to identify some of the information from document one, and we need to find which months in which work will take place on Clumber Street. So we're gonna scan the text for any mentions of Clumber Street and any months that are mentioned as well. So when we have a look at the text, we can see that Clumber Street is mentioned here, creates a new pedestrianized area along Clumber Street, and this will happen in phase one. So when will phase one be happening? Well, we see in this planned time scale box here that phase one will take place from June to September. So the changes to Clumber Street will happen from June to September and the student has written the correct answer here. Question seven. What is one link a reader could click on to access more information about the plans for the bus station? So in this question, we need to identify a link in the text and we need to see which link would be relevant for someone who wants to find more information 
about plans for the bus station. So we need to find a link that's specifically about the bus station. So when you're looking for a link in a text, you want to be looking for any text that is a different colour from the rest of the text and has been underlined. So in this text, we have quite a few links throughout. So for example, we have see the full plans here. So we know that that link is going to be about all of the plans altogether, including the bus station. So that's one option that you could choose. Other links that we have are about the shopping centre, which is not about the bus station, so that's not relevant for us. Um, a pedestrianised area, which again, um, isn't to do with the bus station, but does have a link for that. Um, a castle, we wouldn't be looking at the castle for the bus station, um, but we do have a link about the old bus station here as well. So the other option, other than see the full plans here, that you could choose is this link here, brand new spacious building. So the correct answer to this question could be see the full plans here, or as we said in the text, brand new spacious building. Question eight, which one of the following statements is the best summary of Jack Mixture's objection to the redevelopment plans? Tick one. So in this question, we have to read the following statements that are down here, and we have to choose one of them that best summarizes Jack's objection to the redevelopment plans. So objection would be reasons that he disagrees with the plans. So the first one, the cinema will just encourage people to stay inside. The second one, the council is investing money in things that are not needed. The bus station is not used by many people, or the library will not be useful for the residents of Hurstbourne. So which one provides the best summary? So if we have a look at the document, we can see that he talks about all of his objections to the plans here. And he says, no, 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 what's the point of putting money into things that will only keep people inside? So when you're looking to summarise, the start of a text can often be quite useful. And in this case, the start of this paragraph is particularly useful. He's suggesting that the council is pointlessly putting money into things that will keep people inside rather than outside. And he mentions that people will be huddled in shopping centres and dark cinemas. The main streets will remain deserted. A bus station is only useful for a few people. And why spend so much money on the castle when what we need is more feet in the street? So he clearly wants more people out on the street. And then he explains that the library isn't needed. Our city centre doesn't need this waste of space. It's not like anyone goes to a library to relax or have fun. So overall, the best summary of his objection would be the second one there. The council is investing money into things that are not needed. Why is it not the other options? Well, he does mention that the cinema will encourage people to stay inside. He mentions that the bus station won't be used by many people and that the library will not be useful. But these are all small points that contribute to his overall argument that the council is investing money into things that are not needed. So that provides the best summary overall. Question nine. Find four phrases in document two that suggest not many people currently use Hurstbourne shopping area. So in this question, we're focusing on document two and we want to find four phrases. So four um, short collections of words that suggest not many people are currently using Hurstbourne shopping area. And this question is worth four marks. So you might want to spend a little bit more time on it than the other questions. So let's have a look at the text and scan it for any phrases that suggest that the shopping area is not being used very much at the moment. So 
all of the phrases that are highlighted in green here are potential answers. So we've got as deserted as ever. Now that suggests that the area is completely deserted, there's no one around. What we need is more feet on the streets. That suggests there's not many feet, not many people on the streets at the moment, and the area could really use more people coming into it. It would be great to get families and kids back into the city centre. Suggests that maybe in the past, um, the shopping area was really popular, but now its popularity has dwindled and families and kids aren't going to the city centre at the moment. Then we've got, let's make Hurstbourne city centre popular again. Well, that suggests that the area is not popular at the moment. Not many people go there. Breathe life into the area again. Um, that is a metaphor that has been used to suggest that the area is um, it's kind of desolate. There's no life um, around and more people are needed to breathe life into the area. And finally, we've got nearby restaurants will finally have some customers, suggesting that they don't really have any customers at the moment. So four phrases that the students identified are as deserted as ever. We need more feet on the streets. It would be great to get families and kids back into the city centre and make Hurstbourne city centre popular again. Question 10, select two opinions from the following statements. So here we need to read the following statements and we need to select the two opinions. So the first one, the local council has announced plans to invest 250 million pounds. Now this is not an opinion, this is a fact. How do we know this? Well, 250 million pounds indicates a statistic. They're using numbers there and we could prove that 250 million is going to be invested. So that's what makes it a fact rather than an opinion. We can't disagree with this. B, have you read the council's plans? Well, that is definitely not an opinion. It is a question indicated by the question mark there. C, a bus station is only useful for the few people who use public transport. So this is an opinion. How do we know this? Well, we can agree with or disagree with this statement because it is somebody's thought or feeling. Someone's opinion that the bus station is only useful for people who use public transport. It might also be useful as a sort of social gathering place for the elderly, um, or it could be useful as a meeting place as well. So we can disagree with that statement there. D. 180,000 people visit the castle every year. Now this is a fact. We know this because they've used a statistic here, some numbers, and we could prove that 180 visitors go to the castle every year. E. Development is needed, but not this development. That's an opinion. It is something that somebody thinks, and we can definitely disagree with it. We can say that this development is a good one, or we can say that no development is needed at all. So that is what makes it an opinion. And finally, I am one of the Hurstbourne public transport users. Well, this is just a statement. It is a fact. You could prove that that person is using Hurstbourne public transport. So the two opinions here are C and E for two marks. Question 11. Whose comment agrees with the main article written by Jack Miksha? So we need to scan through the document and look at the comment section. And then we need to find one person's comment that agrees with the main article. So we need to know what the main article is arguing and we need to see who agrees with it. So in the comment section, we can see that Gordon says, who cares? Well, that's not agreeing because clearly Jack cares. Um, about the issue, written quite a lot there, and is quite passionate. Rashi, I think this development will breathe life into the area again. Visitors to the new shopping centre are bound to spill out into the high street too. It'll be great. So while Jack thinks that the, the current investment, there's no point 
in putting money into these things. Rashi is saying that it, it will be a good idea, that it will be great. So Rashi disagrees with Jack there. And that's a great argument, Rashi. And I can't wait to go to the new cinema. I hope they'll play 3D movies. When that opens, all the nearby restaurants will finally have some customers. Now, Anne seems to be agreeing there because she says that's a great argument, but she's not actually agreeing with um, Jack. She is agreeing with Reshi. And Reshi disagrees with Jack, so Anne is also disagreeing with Jack there. Cassia, I am one of the Hurstbond public transport users, but you are completely correct that we do not need a huge new bus station. The space could be better used for more shops. So the correct answer to this question is Cassia. Why is this? Well, she definitely agrees with Jack. Says that Jack is completely correct that we do not need a huge new bus station and agrees that the space could be, be better used for more shops. So the correct answer to this question, the person that agrees with the comments in the main article is Cassia. Mm -hmm. Question 12. Whose comments have a dismissive tone? Give three answers. So dismissive means disagreeing with the comments, ignoring them or completely pushing them aside. And we need to identify three commenters whose comments have this kind of dismissive tone where they are disagreeing with people or ignoring them. So if we have a look at the comment section, we can see that Gordon is completely dismissing the issue. He says, who cares? Suggesting that no one really cares about the issue and nobody should care. Reshi definitely isn't dismissive, um, takes the issue seriously and says that the development will breathe life into the area. Anne also isn't dismissive says that she can't wait to go into the new cinema, is very much in favour of the new investment. Cassia isn't very dismissive either. She's quite passionate about the issue. Joe is particularly dismissive. Um, he's dismissing Anne's comment here, saying Anne 3D movies are the worst. It's just a gimmick and the glasses are so uncomfortable. So completely dismissing Anne's argument there, saying that she's just wrong, that her opinion is incorrect. And then we've got another dismissive comment from PB here, who says, don't listen to Joe Five, Anne. So completely disregarding what Joe Five says um, is quite a dismissive comment there. So which three people are dismissive? Whose comments have a dismissive tone? We've got Gordon, Joe Five and PB. Question 13. Reshi says visitors to the new shopping centre are bound to spill out into the high street too. What does he mean by this? So we've got to select one of these options here. We need to see what Reshi means by this phrase that visitors to the new shopping centre are bound to spill out into the high street too. So does he mean that people in the shopping centre will just cause a mess? No, because when we look at the context of his comment, um, he says that the development will breathe life into the area again. Um, it will be great. So he's, he's sounding quite positive there. Um, so it's very unlikely that he will be talking about people just causing a mess. The second one, shopping centre customers will also visit high street shops. Now, that is the correct answer. He's definitely thinking that this positive effect will occur. C, the shopping centre will be too crowded. Again, based on the context, he says that it will be a great development. He's not suggesting anything negative like the crowding of the shopping centre. And D, there is no need for both a shopping centre and a high street. Again, this is quite a negative comment here. And based on the positive context of what Rishi's saying, um, saying that the development will be great, that is 
incorrect. He's definitely not saying that. So he's saying that there will be a positive effect and that shopping centre customers will also visit high street shops. Question 14. Compare opinions from document 1 and document 2 about the plans for the new library. So for this question, we need to be looking at both documents and we need to be focusing on opinions. So people's individual thoughts and feelings. And we're specifically looking for opinions that are about plans for the new library. So we're going to scan through the text to find opinions there and then we're going to compare them. So the student has written that document one is for building a new library, whereas document two is against it. Document one suggests it will attract families back into the city, whereas document two suggests a play area would be a better way to do this and argues that no one goes to a library to have fun. So why is this a good answer? Well, we've got a balanced account of both documents. We've got document one and document two spoken about equally here. And the opinions have been compared, the viewpoints. So document one being for building the library and document two being against it. And then document one suggesting it will attract families and document two suggesting a play area would be better. So these are all opinions, the thoughts and feelings of the writers. And finally, we've got these really good comparative words here. Whereas, to compare the differences between the two documents. So really, signposting to the examiner that you have an ability to compare. Question 15. Compare how documents 1 and 2 use language and or layout techniques to convey information about the castle. So again, we are comparing both documents here and we want to look at how they use language and or layout, layout techniques. So you can talk about language and layout techniques or you can talk about just one of these to convey information about the castle. So we're focusing on how they've used language or layout techniques to convey information specifically about the castle. So here the student has written that both documents use statistics and facts to convey information about the castle. Document one takes on an enthusiastic and proud tone, whereas document two uses rhetorical questions to convey a more dismissive tone. So we've got a really good comparison here. Both documents have been spoken about equally and we have comparative words in there like both to show a similarity and whereas to show a difference. So we're definitely showing the examiner that we can compare here. And language techniques have been identified. So both of the documents are using statistics and facts. That is one example of a language technique. And then we have spoken a little bit about the tone that is conveyed by document one. So a tone is another sort of type of language technique there um, and document two using rhetorical questions. So there's another language technique that has been used. 